Hey guys, welcome back to episode 34 of Everything Everywhere All At Once. I'm your host, Stephen Edwards. And we are, you know, since the beginning, I've been saying, you know, the subtitle of this series, Everything Everywhere All At Once, is finding certainty and meaning from all the chaos and mayhem that is around us in our individual lives and our collective lives. It's impossible not to see it anymore, right? And we've been using the, the war in... Gaza, Israel, between Hamas and the Israelis. And of course, the, the biggest picture from the people uh, who are also playing in this game of chess at a higher level and using this war as a proxy war for their goals and end um, uh, what they want to create in the end, right? And so why we look at meaning, what does all this mean? Well, it's happening because we are in resistance to what is happening. What do I mean by that? I mean that the frequency of the universe, the earth, is increasing. And this is affecting our bodies. Our bodies are made of the earth. And as this frequency increases in its speed, right, that affects our perception of time, but also our reality. Because we've lived in a fear-driven world which is controlled by the mind. And the powers that be know if they can control our mind, they can drive us by fear and create conflict. We become afraid of each other. We become afraid of different religions. We become afraid of the different sexes, the different states, the different counties, people of a different creed or a different color. It's easy to create conflict, financial conflict. All these conflicts that we fight each other on because we're driven by our mind and they're controlling our mind to look at certain things and make mental or intellectual sense of them, which is nonsense. It doesn't make any sense. And as you try and make sense out of this war, I challenge you to do that intellectually. Okay, challenge over because you can't do it. Right? Because people are stuck in their history, what they did to me, what and they're, they're stuck in what you did to them, and it never ends, right? And so we have to transcend it. And that's what this higher frequency is trying to help us do to get out of our mind. We are being pushed out of our mind. Some people said, well, you already were. Well, we were insane. Yes, but we weren't out of our mind. We need to get out of our mind. And if you see every day, just look at how many uh, mass shootings there are every day. There are more mass shootings every day than there are days in a year. Because people are literally going out of their mind. They're being pushed out of, this, out of their mind by this frequency that is moving to a higher level in order to help us and enable us to move to a higher consciousness. But we're resisting. We want to stay in our mind. We want to think it through. But in reality, what we're asking for is our freedom. And the universe is saying, God is saying, I'm trying to give it to you, but you won't listen. You, you're not doing what I'm trying to help you do, which is to get out of your mind and into your heart. Because your heart is your CIA, your central intelligence agency. That's where your wisdom is. And you want to stay in the mind and you want to stay in control of these people who will put you at war with each other. Not just in countries, not just in religion, not just in your job, not just in your company, but in your relationships. And not just with each other, but with yourself. You're fighting yourself. How's that going? Right? That's what we do when we stay in the mind. Because we have all these beliefs about ourselves that cause us to self-destruct. Right? I mean, not you, but there are people out there, right? And so we've got to transcend it. And the way we do that is to do what the ancients told us to do from the beginning. Live from the heart. Speak from the heart. To be heartfelt. And if something is true, you will feel the frequency. If you put the, your hand in front of your face and you speak, you feel the vibration. In the beginning was what? The word. Which translated means logos. Logos is sound. Sound is vibration. We live in the universe, one song. I know, it all adds up if you do the math, right? right? So we live in this vibratory field, this vibratory universe, and we're being pushed out of our mind to get into living from our heart and the vibration of our heart. The feelings in our heart are like strings on a guitar, right? We can play the music of our heart. 
and our heart connects us to the earth, literally, and we'll look into this later, right? And, our, and, our, and the earth is connected to the universe. And when we connect to these things, we can see everything everywhere all at once. We don't even need to understand how, we just know we have faith in that connection and we see the world with our real eyes. Not these eyes. These eyes will deceive you. Our real eyes are our heart and intuition. And that way we can see the bigger picture and we can be in flow. We can relax and we can live with freedom. And I know, what a concept, right? This is a quote from the Bible, Matthew 5, 38, 39. Just as an example, you have heard the law that says the punishment must match the injury. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say, do not resist an evil person. If someone slaps you across the right cheek, right cheek, then offer the other cheek also. I know that's not easy. And our impulse, our reaction, our primal emotion says, kick his ass, you know, hit back. And when we, when we, then we think about that, that just exacerbates it. But when we take a second just to center, and feel and be in our heart and intuition. Our intuition says, if you hit back, you're hitting yourself. If you hit back, you're perpetuating the problem. Respond with compassion, kindness, understanding and love. I didn't say it was easy, but everybody says, you know, feelings are weak. No, the response from the primal emotion and our thoughts, that is weak. The strength is in our heart. So I wanted to read to you a, a poem here by the Lebanese poet, Cahil Gibran, who wrote the book, The Prophet. And this explains a lot of how we need to be and how, the perception that we need to have and how we need to see from our heart what is really going on. Was the flute that plays the soothing music not carved with knives? And was not the bowl that holds the wine of friendship burned with fire? And was not the lute that sings of love and separation fashioned from the cypress tree? All things must be shaped in pain, and all growth is born of suffering. Are we not the clay in the hands of the potter? And are our hearts the strings of this lute? And he who plays us does not play on mute strings. But even as he smites us, he hears the music. For the potter's hand is not cruel, and the potter's ear is not deaf. He fashions us into vessels that are meet for his use. And though he break us, it is that we may be remade. And when he has remade us, his vessels are perfect. Even as the flute is perfect when it has been carved with knives, and the bowl is perfect when it has been burned with the fire, and the lute is perfect when it has been fashioned from the cypress tree. Therefore, let us not grieve for the pain that comes to us, but let us rather rejoice for the hand that shapes us. For the wound is the doorway to the physician, and the pain is the messenger from beyond. And though the messenger be harsh, he brings us a gift, the gift of knowledge, the gift of understanding, and the gift of love. Live from your heart. Speak from your heart. Be heartfelt. And you will see with your real eyes a world that loves you and that you love. I look forward to the next episode. In the meantime, Saper Ord, dare to be wise.